Warning, this show may contain some crude humor and mild swearing. Listener discretion is advised. The show was produced by Geek Happy Network, creators of the very best in audible Oracle entertainment. In other words, podcasts. If you enjoy listening to The Smorgasbord, remember to subscribe to the show on Spotify or on your favorite podcast app. Remember to leave a review. We'd love to hear your thoughts. This is Morgan's One to be ready, two to be steady, three to prepare, and four to be off. Welcome to Smorgasbord, a show where we explore the rituals, myths, and all things strange about the world of food. I'm Mick, and here with me is my co-host, Angel. And today we're covering the strange annual event called the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake. This sounds like the best thing that it has ever thinged. <laughs> in all things? In all things. Yeah. Might be the best thing we've done in 2020. Yeah. You're <laughs> right. You're right. I want to start this year strong. And yeah. it's all downhills from here. Yeah, pretty much. We're, we want to we wanna set the bar high this year and then just screw it up. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's a good goal. Yeah. Like set the bar high and then keep going low. And I mean, it end need, the world high, the end the year high again. Guess what we need for cheese rolling? What hills? Hills, <laughs> and ups and downs. Ups, yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> 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 today we'll look at the history of this strange event and the global popularity today, and I figured it'd be cool to look at some other weird cheeses. We love cheeses of yeah. all kinds. Yeah, you're a big fan of cheese. I think that's why we ended up going with this episode today. Yeah. I, I'm i not, mostly because I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> I got the genetic um, lottery for not being lactose right. intolerant, even though I'm Asian. Mm, yeah, that's good. I don't even know what the percentage is. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of my Asian friends can't scarf down the amount of cheese that i can right well it's good that you we, we, it's good we have you around to take care of such a it's a burden. important <laughs> issue amongst the asian population <laughs> it's a burden i'll happily bear yeah i i'm actually kind of happy i'm lactose intolerant because i would have been so fat with all the ice cream i would have eaten if i wouldn't ever get sick from <laughs> it you know wait how much how much of a threshold can you have? Like, how much ice cream can you have before you start to get sick? I could get, like, five or six scoops of ice cream. Okay, that's ample. <laughs> Sorry. Like a bowl. If I have a bowl of ice cream, I'm usually fine. But I definitely have to, you know, hit the can <laughs> an hour later. And but just it's not like, agony. Yeah, not really agony. It's just... It's a flowing <laughs> in different ways. It's unpleasant. Yeah. It's um, not, yeah, definitely not pleasant. Yeah, my yeah. friend used to work at Ben and Jerry's, and we just eat pints of ice cream. Oh, that's awesome! See, I can't do that. I can't eat a pint of ice cream. Oh. I definitely would You're get missing out. From that. <laughs> I even avoid just milk, or I mean, even cheese. But then I don't know. It's worth it usually until it's not. not. <laughs> <laughs> that's really just life, I guess. Um, but yeah, today, we're, we're, what is exact? What it exactly is the Cooper's Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake? Which I'm just going to call the Cheese Rolling Festival from now on. Yeah, it's like Coachella, but cool. Yeah, have you ever been? I've only heard about it or seen. I mean, sure, a lot of people have seen photos just like me. Yeah, I've only heard about it. Okay. Never experienced it in person. Right, yeah. Well, this annual event apparently happens during the last Monday of May, which is a, also a public holiday in the UK. It's called the Spring Bank Holiday. Um, I don't know why. Why don't they just call it Cheese Day? Well, I mean, because as we'll find out, this this festival happens in one tiny town (laughs) in the UK. It's the one town that matters. Yeah, it's one of those like, well, I guess we're going to have to find a holiday so people will care about it a little bit Um, and then go from there. (laughs) Cheese is a should be a bank holiday. Yeah, the cheese rolling is not a bank holiday, but maybe cheese could be. Cheese day should be my birthday. Which is, I can't remember what your birth March 13th. Oh, it's so soon. Cheese day. Remember it, it. Wait, it's a month still. Okay. It's a month still. Yeah. 
Yeah, so the Cooper's Hill itself, where the actual festival takes place, is a real place located near Gloucester in a small village of Brockworth. I feel like it's one of those words where you're supposed to delete consonants. Okay, I'll so try Gloucester. it again. There wasn't even a CH, it was just a C. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it is Glo- you know, like Gloucester? Leicester is Leicester. Oh. So, so this might just be Gloucester, Gloucester then. Yeah. Okay, we'll just call it Gloucester then. Well, our resident Brit is not here. Yeah, we had a special guest from England who was who was supposed to come in, but she, she went home. She instead. went home. Yeah, <laughs> she she had the case of too much fried chicken, <laughs> which is understandable. <laughs> yeah, which yeah, special our special guests have a hard time. We actually we should have, feed them after yeah. from now on. <laughs> yeah, I mean after thirteen episodes and we've lost all thirteen guests. <laughs> Because we've fed them fried chicken before. <laughs> a pattern is emerging. Yeah. We've actually, yeah, we've had a special guest for every episode and we've lost all oh. of them. <laughs> We're just cursed. Yeah, from now on, we'll, yeah, we'll definitely feed them after, I think. That's a good, that's a good lesson to learn. <laughs> we hold them hostage until... <laughs> yeah. Contribute. We don't get yeah. to go home. We'll dangle a piece of chicken in front of them as we have them as a special guest. Dangle a piece guest. of cheese in front of them. Yeah. So without a resident expert in all things England, we're going to push forward. Anyway, this small village of Brockworth is located far west from London. So it's more on the west side of whatever the UK island is shaped. <laughs> Looks like a nugget. Yeah. <laughs> the left side of this nugget. <laughs> okay. Put it that way. It's middle west. It's the middle west side of the nugget. <laughs> it's geographically yeah. accurate. Yeah. So if you're eating from the right, it's probably the last bite you're going to have of the nugget. Um, what what exactly is the festival though? Well, it's really like we mentioned, it's just a small local festival that really just features one event, which is the cheese rolling part. <laughs> it's um where they grab an eight pound wheel of cheese and literally roll it down a massive hill, while a group of people, which I'd like to call them idiots, but <laughs> we'll just call them people. I call them innovators. Innovators, yeah. <laughs> try to chase this big wheel that's rolling down this hill see i would strategically place myself at the bottom of the hill with well, my there's mouth a, open there's a starting point you got to start at the starting point <laughs> no you get your partner in crime to start mm. at the starting point <laughs> and tag them <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think they have a rally or what do you call that relay, relay. i don't think there's a relay <laughs> event for this there's just Run. No, because I will pocket all the cheese and just run. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could get the cheese from other places too, I guess. I don't know. It's better cheese if it's free cheese. True, <laughs> free cheese is good. Uh, what's fascinating about this is no one has ever caught this cheese before it reaches the bottom, so you can't outspeed this cheese, or no one has ever done it yet. This is because I think of how steep the hill is. With a fifty percent grade, it means it's a little short of thirty degrees, which on occasion also can actually have slopes of near vertical so this is how oh, steep this, this is hill is crazy hill so really that, that wheel of cheese just kind of flies um if you want to put it in perspective 30 degrees is steep enough for most average skiers if we're talking about a black diamond hill which i heard is super i don't ski but apparently it's like the most intense kind of ski you mean path. the black diamond rating is that a- yeah okay yeah, i don't ski either yeah apparently that's one of the higher ratings for like more professional or really talented skiers or snowboarders and that's usually about 35 to 40 plus degrees and so this at 30 degrees means it's pretty steep it's kind of if you think about it it's steep enough that if you try to stop yourself from walking down it you'll You're probably roll. <laughs> end up rolling um like think of or it's kind of steep enough that if you try climbing up it you're probably on all fours at that point Mm, so imagine trying to run down this thing i think i've had i've had nightmares about this really (laughs) of just just like free rolling down a hill and i can't (laughs) stop because it's too steep that sounds like just a regular monday oh yeah that too I mean, I always had dreams where, like, I'm driving down a steep hill and right. the brakes don't work. Oh, that's terrifying. It's scary. So what did you do? Do you kind of Fred Flintstone it? I don't know. I think I did that once. And I think another time in my dream, I looked down and I was actually not even in a car. Oh, well, that helped. That's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a lot of how it is. Um, with a hill like that, just imagine an 80-pound or an 8-pound wheel of cheese. 
it's said to go as fast as 70 miles an hour or 112 kilometers an hour. In comparison, that humans really can move at most like 12 miles an hour or <laughs> yeah. 45 kilometers an hour. So you can see there's no way you mm -hmm. could chase this thing. And what also makes it hard to catch is this wheel of cheese gets a one second <laughs> head start as well. Oh, uh, so, yeah, you're never going to get it. Yeah. A cheetah might be able to get it. Yeah, but there are enough innovators out there who mm -hmm. try and try and try to do it. Um, and it's very common to see them just roll <laughs> or fall or flop. They might be able to catch it if they get into one of those big balls. Maybe, those maybe. Inflatable balls. And that's just, true. And just ride it. <laughs> the way, that's a good way to beat a mm -hmm. wheel is just get a bigger wheel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yeah, as you could imagine... This chaos will result in quite a, a number of injuries. It does tend to happen. When I was looking into this, it actually doesn't happen as common as you think. And what, the injuries? Injuries, yeah. yeah. Like someone gets hurt, but no one really like... It doesn't always happen that someone breaks a bone or lo loses a leg or whatever. It's more a few scrapes. I think a big part of it is every year they do prepare for the festival. So they... You know, smooth they train it out. for the cheese? They do. Well, train for the cheese and also clean them hill itself so they'll smoothen out the hill a little bit remove any kind of debris that they could find any rocks or whatnot to prevent all these injuries also to my surprise no one has ever died from this <laughs> i think someone I died from like eating the cheese i don't know something like that <laughs> like alcohol related whatever but not necessarily from running hmm. down the hill good tidings yeah there, there was even a year that in 2010, I think, in the most 2010 fashion, that the government tried to shut it down for legal reasons, because, or they called mm -hmm. it health and safety. I feel like they were more like, we don't really want to <laughs> pay to... We don't want this to be a liability. Yeah, kind mm -hmm. of thing. And that kind of caused more of a backlash. So the next year it came back, um, but the authorities never really took responsibility for the event <laughs> anymore, which is... I guess the most government thing to do. <laughs> They're like, oh, okay. it's expensive. Let's just leave it alone. <laughs> um, You're on your own, peasants. Yeah. In 2013, they tried to use a foam replica to make it more safe, which the reason they thought it would be safer is because at least with a foam replica, bystanders no longer get hurt <laughs> by the cheese because you get this 70 mile an hour wheel of cheese flying down it's bound to hit someone down there <laughs> you should yeah. know not to get there yeah You'd stand there i mean yeah and interestingly because of its size and all that is actually considered a missile <laughs> i mean yeah if, it, if that thing hits you England. you're breaking some bones yeah so they tried to use a foam thing and that really lasted all of one year hmm. that was a dark year yeah no honestly like Dairy the government free. yeah Dairy, yeah, you imagine that you win it and you're like, congratulations, you win a foam wheel. <laughs> like, Damn, I could have just carved one myself. Now, do they actually win anything? They do. The winners win the wheel of cheese. Right, but since no one has ever caught the cheese, was there any actual winners? Well, they determine the winner. So actually, unlike what you might think, it's not actually whoever catches the cheese that wins it. It's whoever gets to the finish line. It's a regular oh, okay. race. So it's a race, too. Yeah. When it comes to the format of it, it has five races that happen. Oh, intricate. Um, plus a small little segment where little kids get to run uphill <laughs> for safety. I really want to watch that one. It's like film it and then watch it in reverse. Now, are they allowed to throw cheese at these kids? No. Oh. Unfortunately. Of the five actual races, it's divided by gender. So four races for men and one race for women. I'd assume that's that primarily right. because of participation rates. Because women aren't reckless enough to hurdle down a hill. <laughs> they're not innovators. <laughs> they're, just not, they're just not innovative enough, apparently. <laughs> so typically about 20 to 40 people participate per race. And the prize is the, ro is the wheel of cheese itself. You can also, I guess as a guy, participate on multiple of these races. And we'll talk about later. There's some people who've actually won multiple times in one year. Oh, man. Think of all that They're just, cheese. Yeah. Extra innovative. <laughs> like me in Skyrim, all yeah. I did was take cheese <laughs> and then I dropped it in my house. <laughs> Were you the ones who would use your sneak and just walk behind them and pickpocket yeah, the I, cheese? I out? took all the cheese. Oh, I man, wanted yeah. to make a cheese dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I love just robbing people and sneaking around. I had a wheel, like a wheel basement. <laughs> wheel of cheese basement. A wheel. I thought you said real. A real. A real wheel. A real wheel. A real wheel basement. Real wheel cheese basement. basement? Oh, nice. I sound like a serial killer. I have a real basement. <laughs> I, I like collecting. Was it the bone fish? Bone fish? I don't know. Dragon it was just, bones? It just looked like a bowl of powder. Anyway, oh. oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Bone meal. That's yeah, bone means. meal. Yeah. I didn't. I had no idea what it did. <laughs> I was a terrible Skyrim player. Oh, uh, me too. I never I did bad. the quest. <laughs> I did all the side quests and then really? I accidentally declared war on White Run and I'm like, that's <laughs> not what I wanted. <laughs> I was just always look at the quest and I'm like, can I sneak this? No? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a cheese, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was carrying around, you know how you get weighed down Yeah. kind of stuff you're carrying. One yeah. time it's just like 50, 50 wheels of cheese. You're trying to run from, from the police and you're just dropping wheels of cheese because you're too heavy. <laughs> Jeez, I'm rolling. <laughs> they see me rolling. <laughs> they hate me. <laughs> um, so yeah, when it comes to the winners, Chris Anderson is the most accomplished winner, winning a total of 12 rolls of cheese in his career. Wow. Flo Early is the most accomplished among the women with a total of four. Nice. Kind of big Go difference Flo. there. Um, what is more impressive for me is both Chris Anderson and Stephen Guide. And Stephen Guide's the second most winningest um, <laughs> second runner. Second most winningest. With 21 wheels of cheese won. But both of them have won three cheeses in a year. And they both That's did great. it twice. Wow. Innovators. Just real innovators. <laughs> just absolute innovators. I applaud. There. Yeah. <laughs> Applaud them. <laughs> the race is often hosted also by a master of ceremony who starts the race by saying what we started this podcast with. One to be ready, two to be steady, three to prepare, and four to be off. So at three to prepare, they throw the roll of cheese, and four to be off is when they can go. As a random fact, I found out there has only been one master of ceremony who's actually retired, meaning that all others were masters of ceremony until they died. Oh, so it's a it's a it's a title you hold until you die. And it's like a supreme it's a job. court judge. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's let's go with that. <laughs> they say words and hope things work out for the best. Yes, but usually things fall down from there. Yep, so, especially the cheese. Yeah, the cheese. We're talking about the cheese. Yes, <laughs> this festival does seem to be well loved by the locals. That even during the Second World War, they continued on with the tradition. Bombs but, are falling all over the place. They're like, it's fine. It's fine. Get the cheese. cheese. <laughs> but because of rationing, they couldn't use cheese for those years. Uh, they ended up using a wooden bombs? replica instead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bomb. Rolled a hand grenade. <laughs> it's first one to run away from it. <laughs> Wins. <laughs> They're lit. What actually what happens with that one is they throw a hand grenade down and then they push everybody. <laughs> and you got to stop yourself from rolling. Ooh, I like that game. Yeah. That's what it was. The Rolling Hand Grenade Festival. <laughs> we are innovators. <laughs> yeah. What's fascinating about this, though, is that the origins go way before World War II, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. It's so actually, in fact, there's no real historical evidence of when it started. As far as we know, back and as far as the 1800s, this tradition has already been well established. And they found accounts of like them doing it, but it seems to su suggest the way that the people were talking about it that they've been doing it for hundreds of years or not hundreds but they've been doing it for a long, for a time, long time already I by mean, the 1800s life must be pretty boring you don't yeah. have the internet no <laughs> like, what shall we do today reginald oh yeah let's just roll this <laughs> cheese. cheese i've discovered gravity <laughs> oh yes so <laughs> <Hey>, pip pip <laughs> is that offensive no, good thing michelle's know. not here yeah she should kill us <laughs> This is also why we don't have special guests. Tally ho! <laughs> I'll try this apple for once. Oh, it's not as good. I demand dairy. <laughs> dairy. <laughs> dairy. I want it to roll down in the way it goes down my stomach. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Oh my. Oh dear. <laughs> it seems the master has lost it. <laughs> I've lost it slightly. <laughs> You're so filled with joy that I'm talking about cheese. <laughs> oh boy, another episode about cheese, is it? Now I wonder, do you know what kind of cheese they use? I do, and we're going to get to that 
at, uh, eventually. It's most common belief is that it might have come from a pagan ritual back during the Roman times, because historically speaking, this place was at some point controlled by the Roman Empire. Okay. The idea is that it probably was some kind of harvest or New Year's festival that they did. Mm. And that it wasn't only cheese they used to throw. They used to throw maybe buns and cakes or whatever. Throw a whole goat. <laughs> yeah, whole goat. A cow. <laughs> a little chicken. Oh, <laughs> 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 well, let's, let's throw other things. <laughs> well, uh, according to what I found, they were throwing burning bushwood as well. So Seems dangerous. Oh, it's almost a, like a grenade. Throw the burning bushwood. <laughs> I'll throw a witch with that too. Oh. It's like an old English timey. accents keep getting oh. worse and worse. <laughs> yeah, like. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh, oh my! <laughs> oh my! Yeah, and that sounds like an old timey grenade. Yeah, I, I yeah, I really don't know why they did it. I'm assuming they did it because they hope for a better harvest next year. But I don't know what. But if it's in it May, how is it a harvest? Well, originally it wasn't in during May. It's oh, just okay. recently that they moved it to a ho- to that Not May holiday, just okay. for the holiday. Mm-hmm. Um, for a while it was during Pentecost, which is like a Christian holiday of sorts. I don't know when that is, but so it does get to move move around or whatnot. Okay. But to the big important question that you want to know is what kind of cheese it is. Well, it's a double Gloucester cheese. Gloucester cheese. <laughs> Gloucester. Gloucester. Gloucester cheese. Yeah. Which, Which I don't think I've ever had. No. Well, it's... I've had for, many a cheese. It's a cow's. It's a cheese used cow that uses cow's milk, that's for sure. Um, for the festival, it's an eight, like we said, it's an eight pound wheel. When it comes to size and diameter, it's about three inches thick and nine inches in diameter. It's a hunky hunk it's, of yeah, cheese. It's eight pounds, man. Imagine just seeing that rolling in with 70 <laughs> miles an hour Fury. to your face. <laughs> oh my. Mad Max yeah. cheese edition. <laughs> Mad Max furious cheese. <laughs> Fury. You. Fury mozzarella. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, double Gloucester's cheese is made using cow's milk and uses whole milk in contrast to well, the single Gloucester, which uses skim milk or thinner. So when it clever glou- double <laughs> double Gloucester, double Gloucester, <laughs> double Gloucester cheese is essentially just a really fatty cheese um, that sounds like everything i ever wanted yeah it's about 54 grams of fat for every 100 Oof. grams <laughs> that's over half <laughs> <laughs> not that i know about the fat content in many cheeses i just assume that you need a lot of fat in milk to make right, the cheese. true but this one does sound quite a bit rich rich i mean it's double so <laughs> it's double rich like some guy from Texas just said, Oh, single Gloucester? Well, let's make it double. <laughs> Can you make it triple? I'm sure I'm sure there's a cheese rolling festival in America with just <laughs> triple a hunk of fat. <laughs> like, why use cheese? Let's just use a hunk of fat. <laughs> but it has to be circular. Yeah. Yeah, and it has to be hard because then it would just be a yeah, hunk of fat. It would bounce. just like slime down the <laughs> hill. When it comes to the texture of the cheese, it's rather crumbly, but kind of dense at the same time. Mm. Um, and flavor is rather nutty, smoky, and creamy with a sweet smell to it as well. Mm. It sounds delicious. We need opinion. to Google. We might be able to get this from Whole Foods? Maybe. Mm. Yeah, we should go find some cheese. double Gloucester cheese. cheese. Yeah, smother it. It sounds very regional. Like I'm not yeah. sure we're going to be able to find it here. Well, I mean, the event happens in Gloucester, so <laughs> it is a little regional. It took it, me so. a while to find halloumi here. What's that? It's a kind of cheese. Oh, I think I heard about something like that. You can like it's like super hard, right? You can grill it and it like yeah. doesn't melt. That's right. I did look up, see something about that. But I definitely mm. had like a halloumi burger once where instead of using like a patty, they just used a patty made of halloumi. Oh. And it's grilled and seasoned. It's really good. So the patty is just cheese? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. That's awesome. One question to also ask is who actually makes the cheese for the cheese rolling festival? The cheese maker? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, and the cheese maker herself is named Diana Smart. 
And she's one of the very few, if not the only person in existence who still uses the original or as traditional as a recipe as you could find when it Ooh. comes to double Gloucester. So she's been doing it since 1988. Oh, an yeah. 80s baby. An 80s baby. Well, she's kind of old. She's like 80 now. I meant the cheese as a baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's the mama. Yeah, so she's the mama mama cheese. <laughs> mama cheese head. <laughs> yeah, so she's been doing it for, for that long. Obviously, she hasn't been doing it since the 1700s because <laughs> that would make her... Insanely old and yeah. a vampire, maybe. Maybe in a vampire, yeah. Um, I'd be a vampire that feasts on cheese. Yeah. But when they come out at night, you only eat cheese. Yeah. That sounds like me right now. It's like a fruit <laughs> bat with, with cheese. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just sounds like me. Yeah, you just normal. Chill. Like, where's Angel? I don't know. She's probably hiding in her PA coffin. <laughs> Eating cheese. Eating cheese. <laughs> <laughs> What's really sad, though, about Diana Smart is in 2013, a police inspector, some asshole, I guess, warned her that, or told her that, she could be held legally responsible if someone got hurt during the cheese rolling festival because it's her cheese they're after. Wow. What? what a dick. That is not cool. Yeah, so like they're we... voluntarily running down this hill. Yeah, so and it's the most like modern day story. It's the most PC story ever. Oh, I'm offended. You're offending people because they're getting hurt from your cheese. It's well, like no. you're the one running down it. <laughs> you can choose not yeah. to. <laughs> but I think he probably also meant probably the cheese that when it, the cheese hits a bystander or something. Like I said before, but, and yeah, I stand by, by my argument, you get out the, the cheese way. Yeah. <laughs> the cheese's way. Exactly. Like You, you know there's a mm-hmm. cheese coming there, so that's a so, new, yeah. that's a new, not the cheese. If you're blessed by the cheese, Don't by having your femur yeah. shattered by the cheese, you say, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have been graced. <laughs> Like, don't beat on and harp on this poor old lady. She's just a cheesemaker. Shame on you, police person. It's one of the purest professions yeah. I've ever heard of. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like we mentioned, this became quite a popular event globally because people started finding out about it. In fact, some places in the world also are doing this cheese rolling thing now. Not for pagan reasons, mm. as far as I know. Posers. Are they doing it for the gram? Probably. Oh, in okay. New Zealand now, they do have a cheese rolling festival. Um... In Canada, too, they have one. <gasps> Guess where it Definitely is? Definitely not in the prairies. There's no, no. hills. <laughs> it's in Whistler. <gasps> oh, do we have to go to Whistler? I think we should go to Whistler and Only and during the thing. cheese. Yeah. Only during the cheese fest. So apparently in Whistler, Canada, they roll a wheel of Canadian cheese and people can chase down it. Sorry, innovators can go down <laughs> and chase it. And as everyone knows, or not everyone, but Whistler is a well-known ski place with quite a number of diamond and black diamond ski soap so they're pretty sleeps sleep slopes sleep slopes they're pretty steep deep slopes in whistler so i'm assuming it's been quite a run to chase that thing what's cool about here is they also have other events such as dodgeball and smoothie bars costume contests yeah okay so you could be (laughs) well the dodgeball i think you might enjoy because i think this one is people climb uphill Uh but you get to throw cheese at them (gasps) Oh. So there you go. I want to be pelted with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be the one throwing. I, I want to be the one you, catching. Like, I feel like this is like a Simpsons episode or whatever where you're like Homer and you're just oh. catching it. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and with here you win both the Wheel of Cheese and actually a couple of Whistler ski passes as well. Mm. So I guess a prize total of about $2 million because those ski passes are insanely expensive. I'd sell mine. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I can go. buy more cheese. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and chocolate. And you chocolate. can get to the Rocky Mountain chocolate there. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit about the cheese rolling and stuff around the world. It's kind of cool. A unique way to cheese. To cheese, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you look at cheese, you're like, you're just a lump. Yeah. What do you do? Can you roll? <laughs> but apparently now, I know. Yeah. They you... can run a 70 miles an hour. Yeah, you could turn them into missiles. You could hurt people. You could get <laughs> poor old ladies in trouble with the cops. You can and attract cheese is innovators. Some business. Yeah, you could attract so many innovators. <laughs> some of them multiple innovators. <laughs> innovating multiple times in a year. <laughs> so, as weird as it is that they do roll cheese, I, I looked into some other 
strange cheeses instead of uses of cheese. So I looked sure. into some other strange cheeses in the United States in New York. Some chef made cheese using the breast milk of his wife. Oh, and served it in a restaurant. It in my mouth. <laughs> did they? Did they know that it was a lady yes. boob cheese? Okay. Eventually, they had to shut him down for that. And thank goodness, mm. that's gross. Yeah, that's... I don't know. I mean, like... I mean, people were saying it's like gross <laughs> yeah. and savage. Like I'm like, well, I mean, babies yeah. drink out of breast yes. milk, so... and we're drinking the milk of another animal. Yeah, I think some people were saying it was cannibalistic. I'm like, that's a little too far. Babies drink mm. milk anyway, so are they cannibals? Yes, <laughs> yes, Pro- they are yeah. little monsters. Stuff we'll find in that um, subreddit. <laughs> fragile, the yeah. fragile ones. The fragile, the fragile subreddit. Um, in Italy, there's a cheese called Casu Marzu, which is made of sheep's milk and then aged and served with live maggots. Oh, no. So after they create the cheese, the cheesemakers would add the larva into the cheese and let them hatch into maggots before no. eating it. The maggots will kind of ferment the cheese a little bit or something. So then giving the cheese a different flavor, um, it's... To the person whether they want to eat the cheese with the maggots live in there or not. But apparently, according to the traditional Italians who make this cheese, if the mag- if the cheese is no longer good when the maggots are dead. Mm. So Yuck. when eating this cheese... Don't you- they turn into flies at some point? They do. So that's probably why. Um, <laughs> you also do want to put a hand to cover the cheese as you eat it. Because allegedly the maggots, the maggots tend to jump. Oh, no. <laughs> As far as I think six feet or something, it's kind of crazy. Wow, they're strong. Yeah, so that cheese is not sticky, I guess, because the maggots <laughs> just like jump shit. They attain superpowers after they eat the Apparently, cheese. Apparently, it's a just... sim- super cheese. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Not that I ever, I don't want it. I don't think I'll have the. No. Yeah, it's just. I don't think my Ew. love of cheese trumps having maggots on yeah, it. Yeah, and you have to eat it live, remember. You could take the maggots off too, though, and just eat the cheese. No, but I know they touched it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're clean, you know? Probably, you, you but grab still. A few, you grab a few of those larvae, you give them a good nice <laughs> shower and bath, you put them, you give them a nice Scandinavian spa, some massage here and there. Tuck them in and then you kill them. Tuck them in, let them give birth, you clean the maggots as well, you know, they could be well treated, who knows. In Germany, they also have a similar one called Milbenkais, which uses mites instead mm. to ripen the cheese. So the mm. f- apparently it's the, bi- the flavor is a little bit bitter and zesty. And apparently it's said <laughs> to cure the allergies to dust. Wait, really? Yeah. I have a s- very severe dust allergy. Maybe you should some- have some of these mite how cheese. Much do I, how much mite do I have to eat? <laughs> I don't know. It might be one of those like Popeye where you have to eat it to get rid of it. And like... And it comes back. Yeah, and then know. you have to eat more of it. Yeah, I don't know. You just have to eat some zesty mites. Yeah. So I Bitter, can stop making words. snot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, in Tibet, they make yak cheese, which I think we talked about in an earlier episode. Yeah. Um, but what's unique apparently about this cheese is that it's a pretty hard cheese. So you don't chew the cheese. You actually suck and gnaw at it. Almost like tobacco, I guess. Mm. Yeah. You get the juice out. Do you swallow yeah. it? Yeah, you eat it still, but you don't chew it. It's like a hard candy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I'd like to try that. Yeah. In Quebec, apparently they're developing this cheese using fermented lichen and goat's milk. It sounds kind of weird. I don't know why I do that. I'd be into it. <laughs> I, I I've like never goat tasted, cheese. I've never tasted lichen. It sounds gross to me. Me neither. I just know it's something that you can eat in the world of Warcraft. Really? To regain a small amount of health. <laughs> oh. Well, maybe that... It's edible. I try that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That sounds good. I'd eat it. I like if, goat if, cheese. What happens if you mix goat's milk with lichen in World, World of Warcraft? I don't know. <laughs> you can't transmog that or whatever? Mm, not that I know of. No. Maybe you, you become you become Illidan. Yeah. Because <laughs> you go blind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sad. Um, there's also milk from different animals depending on where you are. You could apparently get the horse milk, deer milk, camel milk, alpaca milk, llama milk, or even Rabbit's ass cheese. Rabbit's milk. Yeah. Rabbit cheese. Rabbit cheese. There's ass to... cheese if you want ass cheese. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's one of the most expensive cheese. Don- really? Yeah, donkey cheese. Donkey 
chunky cheese. Yeah. Weird. Even more expensive than something called Stilton cheese, which is made of gold. What? Yeah. Ass cheese. Ass it's the way to cheese. go. Mm. So I'm going to ask the question, like we talked about all this cheese, whether it's good or not. I don't know. To me, it sounds like it's delicious. The double The double Gloucester. cluster. Yeah, it sounds it has great. has a nice name to it, too. <laughs> Double, Double Gloucester, Gloucester. <laughs> coming this fall to, <laughs> to a hill near you. To a hill near you, Double Gloucester. <laughs> Many Forty <of> innovators, <laughs> one, one winner, one, winner. <laughs> one wheel of cheese, <laughs> one old lady, and one old lady <laughs> getting arrested, <laughs> and a policeman. There's actually a lot to this movie. <laughs> Double Gloucester. Sounds like it could be a heist movie. Coming in May. In select theaters. In England. In England. (laughs) Man, this movie sucks. (laughs) Or it's like the best movie you've ever seen in your life. It's really just the entire festival in (laughs) slow-mo. With, I don't know, maybe David Attenborough is narrating it. You can narrate it, yeah. With special guest Stephen Fry, mm. and the Queen. The Queen, yeah, sure. Let's, maybe you maybe we bring Harry and Meghan. Not gonna be too. there. Yeah, yeah. Harry and Maybe Megan. they can get a special invite from. No, the they're Gloucester. they're exiled. That's true. They're Canadians now. Yeah, we have claimed them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd say it's pretty good. I mean, all this other weird cheeses. I don't know if I'll eat any of them. The yak cheese try, sounds cool. Yeah, I like the oh, cool. idea of the yak cheese, and I would try the mite cheese just because allergies. Right. Yeah. But for the taste, I don't know. No. I'm not. I think a I'm, I'm gonna stick to the yak cheese. It sounds cool, fascinating. You have to suck on it. So it's like a pa- a baby pacifier. <laughs> it's like a it's like a jawbreaker. Yeah. <laughs> it's made of cheese. Yeah, that sounds delicious. <laughs> I, I'd buy that. Do you have a favorite cheese? It's a hard, it's a hard one to what, answer. What's your favorite cheese? I have so many. <laughs> I can't possibly okay. choose. I really Name like... Name three. You chop three. Paneer. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's Indian food. Okay. And they usually... I thought that was a dish. That's not... It's... No, a paneer is the actual cheese. They oh, cut cool. it into little cubes. Sometimes right. they pan fry it before they put it in curry. Right. Sometimes they don't. But okay. I like that the pan fry ones are good. Okay. Um, halloumi talked about right. that earlier. I do want to try Delicious. halloumi that sounds so cool it's good it's salty it's right. very close to consistency as paneer right but it's yeah, saltier it cool. I want I want to try that halloumi burger it sounds cool yeah yeah Yeah. let's go get some halloumi yeah mm-hmm. and then third I don't know this is hard I really like goat cheese mm. but that I don't know specifically I don't know what the names are right I think it's just goat cheese just goat cheese <laughs> Uh, there's a thing called Imperial Cheese, but it's a brand, which is like I in a red I've seen container. That. Yeah. It's kind of like crumbly. That one's really good. I know. Mm. I like raclette cheese because oh, I like raclette. Cheese. I like I like I like raclette. I like raclette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I was growing up, my brother and I used to play this Facebook game called Mouse Hunt. Mm. You ever play that? No. <laughs> it's it's really just every 15 minutes you could sound a horn. Uh-huh. To, to bait and catch different mice okay. <laughs> that was it with cheese yeah so you could bait with different cheese and different cheese could get you different types of mouse oh it's kind of fun no i've never played that it was really mm-hmm. random it's just like i remember growing up and i was like be addicted to it because in every 15 minutes i just check on ah. my laptop and you just tap a button that was it so it's like an early idle game <laughs> yeah it was a very early idle game um and then eventually they added a feature where it could if you were away for like a few hours, you could still horn sound the horn for it. Oh, okay. And get so you don't even it. need to play it to play it. Yeah, it no. Plays it plays itself. It, it was just like some really dumb random thing you would do. It was fun because you get I got to learn so many different kinds of cheese from there. Oh, amazing! Until they released more versions, which were just weird. It was it wasn't real cheese. It was just made up like, cheese. Yeah, like toxic gouda or something. <laughs> like, okay, cool. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess we end every episode with what's your near palate. What are we eating today? Well, we just came from fried chicken. We had a lot of chicken. Yeah. So you could see, if you could hear the snores in the background, that's another special guest who just That's falling asleep (laughs) from chicken coma. We really got to stop having fried chicken before recordings. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Okay. It's just not a good idea. (laughs) 
Yeah, I think my favorite chicken from today was the cumin and ginger. Yeah. So we so did good. go to like a was it Korean? I don't know. We went to a fried chicken place, an Asian fried chicken place, I guess, and tried it out. And we had yeah, the cumin one was pretty good. Yeah. We Their did. honey garlic was interesting because it was more like just spicy, with garlic. And there's one that made you cry. Yeah. The oh my god wings. <laughs> I was like, this isn't spicy. And I look over, Mick is sweating. <laughs> like, water. Water. Help me. Water. <laughs> it was a good place. Mm-hmm. I think I like Kokuru more, though. Yeah, we'll go back to Kokuru next yeah. time. This one does feel nicer or cleaner. I don't know. It's because it's new. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> give him a few months. <laughs> yeah, give him a few months. Oh my God, it's holy sh. <laughs> <laughs> holy sh. <shit>, chicken. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we had, fried chicken. Fried chicken. Anyway, um, I don't know what what episode should we try next week, next episode. I don't remember if we had a list. We were going to look into holy cows. Yes. (laughs) So we might do holy cows. If not, I think I was going to look into some ancient food traditions that still exist today. Yeah. That might be cool, too. But as always, just send us a message if you have any food ideas you want us to explore or talk about or even experiment. Um, I think by the time this episode comes out, our first video episode would have come Yay. out as well. So we want to try to experiment with food as well. And we'd love to have other people to come join us. Yeah. For three uh, listeners. Watching that video, I didn't realize how twitchy I was. <laughs> it was swinging around that, that, right. that rice <laughs> scooper. <laughs> So much. I just wanted to slap myself like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even look at my face when I was editing that. Was like, oh, this is weird. Can I just... Yeah, oh, can we have like that? hair deep take, and makeup? Deep take my face. Yeah. We need hair and makeup and wardrobe. Yeah, we, <laughs> if our hair and makeup team would stay awake. We could use it. <laughs> well, we know what the trick is. Don't yeah. feed them chicken. Don't feed them chicken. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, thanks everyone. Thank you. Who are we shouting out today? Who's our well shout One out for to three listeners? <laughs> three. I think we have four. We're gonna have four, but our goal this year is gonna to be to get four, four listeners. listeners. Amazing. Yeah. New Year's resolution. We're gonna get four listeners to the show. <laughs> so shout out to that fourth listener. Send us a comment. We don't know you yet. Yeah. Shoot us a comment somewhere and tell us you're the fourth listener. <laughs> we might send you a t shirt or something. I don't know. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Bye. This is Smorgasbord! Have a food-related ritual, myth, or something strange you want us to explore? Send us a message through Facebook at Geek Happy Network. We'd love to hear from our fellow foodie listeners. And while you're there, remember to subscribe or follow us too. This show was created by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Hosted by Angel Lynn and Mick Narciso. Editing by Mick and logo by Angel. Come give us a listen at geekhappynetwork.com or look for us on your favorite podcast app. Oh, and be sure to follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Geek Happy Network.